this technology that's a game changer for human spaceflight. Spaceworks is an advanced aerospace engineering company pursuing the technology and developing capabilities for deep space travel. In 2013, I submitted a proposal to NASA headquarters focusing on the human systems. I encountered this technology in the medical field called therapeutic hypothermia that places an individual into an inactive kind of sleep-like state. And they were using this for traumatic brain injuries, uh, cardiac arrest or stroke victims. And they would cool the patient down for two or three days at a time. And uh, that basically gives the body time to recover. So the question became, well, why is it only two or three days and can't we extend that period? And if we could, could we use this on a deep space mission? You know, it's a long process. You've got to be able to do this safe, repeatedly, reliably. Uh, so it's a capability that will expand over time, just as our capabilities to going to Mars will expand. So our vision here is not to uh, put the body in some suspended animation or cryo sleep. We're only targeting a 10 degree reduction from your nominal, you know, 98.6 degree core temperature. That's moving from uh, 37 and a half degrees Celsius down to about 32 to 34. That's the current target range. And with that, we can get a 50 to 70% reduction in the metabolic activity. There's been a couple movies that have shown kind of a hibernation or type process. So there was Interstellar and they kind of had the crew in these bags and water. I'm not quite sure what that was for. Uh, I thought passengers did a good job in at least showing the, the waking process and that, hey, you're gonna be a little tired, you're gonna be kind of groggy. Generally, uh, you know, the idea is there. Uh, they miss on the, some of the benefits Everybody's inactive, but then they're still in this giant ship, uh, which, you know, the reason we're trying to make them inactive is to put them in a much smaller ship. But there are some challenges that we still need to address. Uh, one of NASA's concerns during the study was, you know, what happens if there's an emergency? How long will it take the crew member to wake up? And what is gonna be their cognitive state uh, after this period? But we've outlined a protocol where the crew would be staggered so that at any one time, there's always a kind of a caretaker, somebody that can respond to emergencies and monitor everyone else. We still have to provide nutrition and hydration. Our current approach is to do that through what's called a peg tube. So this is a small port that would directly access the stomach. What we like about it is that it does allow you to transition from the liquid feeding to normal feeding. So if you get to Mars and you wanna have a celebratory hamburger, you would be able to do that. For a crew of four from Mars, we generally send about 10 tons of food. We'd be down to two or three tons uh, with the inactive crew. The majority of it is a reduction in the actual demand that the body experiences. The main thing we're looking for, though, is to render the crew inactive. The habitat can be smaller. One of our reference designs from NASA weighed about 45 tons. We can, go, we can cut that number in half down to about 20 tons for the same mission. We're looking at anywhere from 30 to 50 percent reduction on the rocket side and the habitats are about 50 percent smaller. The current timeline is, you know, in about the mid-2030s, we'd be able to send our first human mission uh, probably to the Mars vicinity, so you wouldn't go directly to the surface. You'd go to the, one of the moons, Phobos or Deimos, and there would be four to six astronauts, and that's about a 200-day mission out. They'd stay there for about 500 days and then have a 200 days or so trip back home. It's a game changer for human spaceflight and uh, I'm hoping the rest of the industry will start to recognize that and, uh, and we'll adopt this and it can be used on our first missions to Mars. You know, kind of the joke is Mars is always 20 years away and 20 years, it'll be another 20 years away. I think this, this technology can ultimately make a sustainable and affordable case for uh, human exploration in the solar system.